YouTube, it's Louise, the Big Head Bookworm. Lovely to see you. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a good day, wherever it is you are, or whatever it is you're doing. And I've... Oh. ah, My booktube cat has just rolled over and looks very cute. So today's booktube cat is Miss Sally. Oh. Um, she is performing the duty of book holder. Um, somebody has to go and lie on the books. And she took one for the team today and she said that she would lie on the books today. Very well done. Good lying. Good lying. She was lying very comfortably over there. And then I put the books down and she was like, it's all right, mum, I've got it. I'll lie on them. And she came and lay on them, which was very lovely of her. Um, I did think it was going to be Miss Molly was going to be our booktube cat of the week. I've just, I've just performed the um, necessary scratching of the armpit. Never known a cat that likes her armpit scratched quite as much as Miss Molly does. So yes, if you scratch an ear, she often offers you a, shall we? I'm like, go on then, have a scratch of an armpit. Um, and that makes her very happy. She's been out all night. Oh, no, don't stop out. Oh, oh even cuter. Um, yes, yeah, she was out all night. Out on the tiles, cat on the tiles. Um, yes, it's beautiful. We've had a beautiful week this week. They've got towels out. They seem to do towels on Friday. If it's been a good week and she's been able to put out what, the washing that she wants whenever she wants. Towels on a Friday. What have they got out? Oh, they're actually... Are they putting it out? No. Oh, for a second there, I thought we were going to have laundry in action and I could commentate. But no. Also, I could do with them trimming their hedge. <laughs> That's popping a little note through the door going, terribly sorry, but I seem to be struggling to see your laundry line. Is there any, any chance you could just trim that little bit there? But no, they're just mooching around in the garden, but they've got towels on. Towels on. We're quite early in the day here. I am doing this before I go out swimming, before I go to the Lido, because it's so beautiful at the moment. I should be going to my happy place, Jesus Green Lido, and swimming the morning away. So lovely. So I am here to talk about the books. Miss Sally, I am going to have to remove your pillow. Yeah. So thank you for everybody that wished me a very nice weekend last weekend. It was lovely. Oh, it was quite warm. And we did spend quite a lot of time outside, which may be why I'm looking quite so bronzed. Such a bronzed beauty. I know, I know. That's not what you were thinking I was looking. Um, I'm somebody who's... um has that kind of kind of Scandinavian colouring, even though I have no Scandinavian heritage. At some point, one of my ancestors must have got friendly with it, somebody from Scandinavia, um, and I have inherited their colouring. So I have the blonde hair, all natural, all natural now. Uh, well, it was uh, natural, it's not so natural now. Uh, but I have that kind of colouring that I go brown very easily, that kind of Scandinavian colouring where they go brown quite easily, rather than the blonde which is the more of this land, the more Celtic blonde of this land, which has freckles and burns. Um, I tend to, I tan quite easily and, and don't burn that, that much, even though I do wear sun cream, yes, and I stay out of the sun and I wear hats and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but we had a lovely weekend, so it was very hot. <laughs> Hottest day of the year, spending a lot of time outside. We were going, whew, there was a lot of kind of, I'm just going to go and stand in the shade. I'm just going to rest here in the shade, <laughs> kind of fan myself. Um, yeah, so that was all, all very good. That was all very lovely. So to my soul family that I saw, that I spent the weekend with, oh, it was lovely. It was divine as always, always. Um, so that was very pleasurable. So I'm not going to see some of them now till September. That seems a long way away. I know it will come around quite quickly, but it does seem a long way away. Um, so yes, whatever. Oh, and I oh had such a good had such a good Wednesday. It was a winning Wednesday in this household. It really was. I went to see a chum of mine whose birthday it was. Happy birthday to her! And uh, she had a, a new hot tub. We didn't need it quite so hot, I have to say. We had a hot hot tub. So we sat in there, and her daughter came out and said, "Are you not feeling like you're cooking?" I was like, "Pop a couple of onions in and." Yes, <laughs> it was it was quite hot. She actually contacted me after and said, sorry, I seem to have boiled you alive there a little bit. Um, but it was great. And then I came home and me and Benedict went to the river over there. Um, and we played frisbee in the river. Oh, it was so lovely. It was such a beautiful day. 
It's so nice. So we're having that kind of week at the moment. It's that kind of summer loveliness at the moment. I hope wherever you are, you are having glorious weather that you feel comfortable in and you're enjoying. Because, you know, some people like the heat, some people like kind of sun and not warm, but we're having a, a good, you can tell, can't you? Oh, oh, oh. There we are. Uh, we're having a good week at the moment. I think it's going to last. I think we've got a couple of a couple of weeks of this, I hope. But anyway, let's get on to the reading. So last week I was reading, sorry, I'm going to have to remove this gently. Oh, oh, she said, excuse me, where's my pillow gone? I know, where's your pillow gone? Um, I was reading this, Cersei by Madeline Minna, Miller. Miller. <laughs> Let's try that again. Cersei by Madeline Miller. And a lot of you said that you had read it as well. Some of you were like me, had it in the old pile and had yet to go down there. I was uh, reassured to read that there were quite a few people who, sorry, it's gone funny, um, had had the same expression, had the same ex experience with Song of Achilles that I'd had. Everybody was raving about it and you liked it, but you didn't love it. Um, this, I was love, love, loving when I last saw you. And I loved it. Oh, it's such a good book. It's such a good book. And I have said to people over the weekend and this week, have you read Cersei? Have you read it? Isn't it good? Isn't it good? I just thought it was great. It really brought the Grecian myths that I were I was familiar with. It really brought them to life and enriched them. And she was such a good character. She wasn't completely lovable. And isn't that lovely when you got a... a a female character that isn't, you know, kind of mother or whore or goddess. You know, she was. Well, she's a goddess. <laughs> she is a goddess. Um, that she had. She had. You know, she wasn't perfect. She wasn't perfect. Although she kind of was at the same time. But you know, she she had depth to her, and a lot of the characters had depth to to them. They weren't wholly good or wholly bad. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. So I highly recommend this, Cersei by Madeline Miller. Um, it has a, it has a way, it, the way it's written, the tone that it was written in is kind of like that kind of overtly storytelling. It wasn't trying to, there was a, almost a slight distancing tool. So it was very much, telling you the story of it um and that took me a little while to get into but i liked it for that because of the theatrical nature of the stories and the fantastical and you know gloriously otherworldly tales it was telling having this slight distance um i think really worked and i think that it was the tone was pitched perfectly so that was lovely i really enjoyed it i really i can't i can't speak highly enough of it cersei by madeline miller so yes that was and it's a very pretty book let's have a look at the um dust jacket shall we shall we unveil it oh look at that it's even pretty without the dust jacket they've made a the naked hardback is a ah <gasps> do you know i think that's even more beautiful that's lovely isn't it end papers you want to have a look don't you I don't need, I never really look at the maps, but it's nice to have one there. But lovely, beautifully done, beautifully produced. Bloomsbury did mighty well with that book. Well done, that Madeline Miller. Right, good book that was. Let's put that there. Um, I'm also been reading, I'm going to have to just remove this from your. Oh, she says, I managed to do that without removing the can. That was good. Um, I. Reading this, Raina Wins The Salt Path. This has been recommended to me a couple of times. A tale of triumph, of hope, of despair, of love over everything. Oh yes, oh yes, The Salt Path. It's about walking the southwest coast path, which is a coast path around uh, Somerset and Devon and Cornwall and Devon and... Does it go into Wiltshire at the end? I think so. So it is um, a couple 
Uh, just after Raina Wynne learned that Moth, her husband of 32 years, was terminally ill, they lost their home and livelihood. With nothing left and little time, they impulsively decided to walk the 630 mile southwest coast path from Somerset to Dorset via Devon and Cornwall. Living wild and free at the mercy of the sea and the sky, they discovered a new liberating existence. But what would they find at the journey's end? So it looks quite fascinating. So it's quite a fascinating book. I am about 70 pages in. I am exactly 70 pages. None of the abouts at all. Thank you very much. Um, and is a, it's a good memoir. It's a good memoir where she's giving you lots of information. Um, but it's it's got kind of you're already I'm already kind of invested in their walk. It, I also know a lot of this area because I lived in. Devon for one point at one point and uh, the husband and I adore Cornwall so we know a lot of the coastline of Cornwall and Devon both north and south and Dorset as well so um, all of that kind of all of this coastline I am familiar with not all 630 miles of it but a lot of it I am familiar with and I have walked kind of six miles of it here and a couple of miles of it there so yeah, and I would love to do it I don't particularly want to do it in the way that they're doing well let's be honest I quite like the idea of doing little patches of it here, there and everywhere. But it is inspiring at the moment. And the, and it's that kind of like um, triumph over adversity is what I'm imagining. I'm hoping so. But who knows? Um, so, yes, that's what I'm reading at the moment. So that kind of nature and kind of walking and kind of landscape and human adversity and hopefully triumph over adversity. So, yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm reading that at the moment, so I picked that up. But I've been horribly distracted this week. Firstly, by Wimbledon. It's a glorious week. There's all this tennis. Somebody's got to watch it. Obviously, I'm part of that team of people watching it. That my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law basically doesn't do anything for a fortnight and just watches Wimbledon. I admire her for that. Um, I used to know. I used to work with somebody who always had the Wimbledon fortnight off. And you go, what are you, what are you doing? And she'd just go, I'm watching Wimbledon. And you go, yeah, well, you know, you're going to do other stuff. And she's like, no, no, I'm going to watch Wimbledon. So from the moment the coverage started, which is like half past ten in the morning, until it finishes, which is like nine o'clock at night, she would watch the whole thing. She would do just, that's it. That's what she'd do for her holiday. I quite like people that have this kind of focus and dedication. Um, so, yeah, so I've got that on. But I was also, I started... I've had this on my um, Audible account for ages and I listened to an hour or two of it and then didn't get into it because it was quite long and I've just really got into it this week, especially yesterday, and now it is not showing you it. So yeah, it's black. There you go. That's great. That's just not working. Okay. It is Anne Rules, who is, you know, True crime, a go-go. Green River Running Red, the real story of the Green River Killer, America's deadliest serial murderer. So it is about 20 hours long, if not more than that. I have listened, I'm, I've got 11 hours left, so I have done quite a lot of listening. And it is, it's harrowing. It's a harrowing listen. Um, and it also has been reminding me of it's brought up a lot of themes that I have read from previous books. And it's about the how prostitutes, how sex workers or people that work in the sex industry are so viewed as less than and that somehow their life is disposable or somehow their life means less than somebody doing a different job. Um, or with from a different background, and it. I watched something about the Yorkshire Ripper, who was a serial killer that we had in uh, the in Yorkshire in Northern England in the seventies, and how um, he was the attitudes towards the women that he killed was very much like. Well, they asked. They kind of you know kind of half their fault it wasn't explicitly said well I think it might have been but it was very much you know these women and labeling all of these women all of the ones that he killed the vast majority of the, the ones that he killed as um 
prostitutes at the time. They were called prostitutes at the time. They were now, I think, it's sex workers, and very much kind of um, well, you know. Basically, their lifestyle was encouraging somebody to to murder them. And even if they didn't, they weren't part of that industry. It was easier to to kind of just kind of brush them aside, brush these women aside. And these women's lives were just held as nothing, just counted as nothing. And it was only when somebody who was definitely not a sex worker was murdered that they were like, oh, you know. God, this is this is awful. Now you know she was a she was a, a good woman and she shouldn't have been killed. As though the the women that who were sex workers were basically not good women. They were bad women. They were asking for it and and this kind of and it seems to be about this. This is in the early eighties, the Green River Killer. And it, again, there is this attitude of well, you know, they're flighty women and um, they're flighty. And they're asking for it and they're, they're worth less. Their life somehow is seen as worth less. And it's not so troubling. But you hear the list of the, the people that all these women that were going missing in this area. I mean, just so many of them. And their lives leading up to it, to their decisions to, to work uh, in that industry, they're not. They're not coming out of school going, hmm, let me look at a career that I fancy. I know. I'll go and I'll go and perform services on gentlemen. You know, there's not there isn't that kind of decision. It's out of poverty and desperation and hopelessness and abuse and manipulation because you know a lot of them had these male protectors who were basically taking their money off them so they were all, you know earning all this money performing services on gentlemen and then um having the money taken off them and so it's like this idea that they i've just you know where it's been listening there was the idea that they were choosing they were choosing this because they liked you know because they liked sex so much i don't think so I don't think they were getting an awful lot of pleasure out of these things. <laughs> and it just is... Oh, I mean, I hope that the society's attitudes changed. That's kind of what you want, isn't it? You want progression, but there is that kind of fear in me that perhaps it hasn't. And it is so pervasive, such pervasive um, thought. But... Um, and it's very tempting to look away. I found that as well. It's like there's a lot of stuff going on in the countries and in society that it's very tempting to go, oh, that's bother that's bothersome. Go and read a Mills and Boone romance. Some days that's what I do. But I do think there's also that's not the way that we are going to come out of this. Inside that's just my personal little opinion. That's a nice little soapbox I found myself on. Oh, very nice. I might decorate that. Um, so, yes, it is It is hard to listen to, but fascinating at the same time. And I think this is one of the one of the books that I've... Because I really like Anne Rule as a true crime author. She's no longer with us. And um, she was the one that wrote the one about, I think, the definitive book on Ted Bundy because she knew him. She was a friend of his, and that was the kind of shocking thing. And it's the stranger beside me is her, her most well known book. But she has she was part of the Green River Task Force. You know they were feeding her all this information because she lived in the area and she knew the police um, that were on the task force and were trying to solve this mystery. And so she wrote. I think this this is a kind of um, a later edition where it has all the information about the murderer, Gary Ridgway, who, who did it. Whereas she actually released a book where it wasn't. I, th I think she released a book where it was kind of the hunt for him and not found, you know, he was not found. But she was part of that. And she used to give talks, I think I read somewhere. And they realised that he used to go and follow her. Um, almost to find out what the police were were finding out about him. So I mean, it's it's incredible. Again, another killer came into her 
her orbit so it's quite fascinating for that so I really like it but what she is doing is she's telling the stories of the victims so she is making these women not just a mugshot and she talks about the fact that the, the pictures that released to the public are mug mugshots so they're in terrible state at the time and so they're not looking their usual selves I mean nobody would choose to release a picture of a mugshot as themselves and um, which is similar to what happened to the the prostitutes with the um sorry sex workers um with the yorkshire river ripper there were some photographs that that's the only photograph they had of that person because of their life because of what had led up to the their you know the way they were the way their life had formed that there was no other picture and um yeah makes you realize makes you realise the difference in, in people's upbringing and it's so easy to go, well, you know, look down on somebody else and their, for their choices. And yet, and yet, dear friends. Anyway, so yes, nice, that's a lovely soapbox. I should now step off it and move it to one side. <laughs> so yes, there you are. There's your Friday. It's not a Friday read, it's a Friday rant. It's not really a rant. It was just, it's a lot of thoughts in my head about it at the moment. That's kind of where I am. This beautiful sunny day thinking these these dark thoughts however it's a really good one it's a shame i can't it's not really picking up on the on the screen but it's a it's a good one so i've got as i say i've got 11 hours of that but i'm really into it so much so i haven't listened to hardly any podcasts i know there's a crime junkie i haven't listened to it yet <gasps> yeah i'm loving that so i shall carry on reading the salt path i shall carry on listening to my uh green river running red Sally will continue snoozing. Miss Sally's going to just stay here. Do you have any plans for the day? Do you have any plans for the day? No, I don't think so. I think I think we can safely say her plan is to remain there. Relaxed. Relax. She's gonna she's gonna relax for the day. Um and so that's it. That's it, dear friends. I probably oh oh there is live lord reaction bedding oh that is a two-man job is that actually their duvet or is it just their duvet cover i do believe it is actually their duvet their com not a comforter the duvet let's have a big washing machine to get all of that in oh it's twisted up oh, that's a nightmare it's twisted itself on the line ah but there they're pros. They're pros. She sorted it out. He's doing well. Has he got his pegs? Oh, very nice. Very nice. Oh, obviously, I don't think they feel like it needs to be pegged out because of the weight of the thing. Oh, yes. It's a two-person job. It's actually a two-person job. She's just a, she's just having a look at it. I think your towels are dry. Yeah, he's agreed with me. So my towels are dry. It's fine. I'll take those in. Why are they dry, she says. He says, I think it's dry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's dry, he says. I'll fold it up. Good bit. Is the other towel dry? Yeah, no, he's confident the other towel is dry as well. Very wise man. I don't think the small towel's dry. No, that could do with a bit longer. Keep that out a bit longer. There we go. They're going in now. Well done. What a Friday. Friday morning action. Ten o'clock in the morning. Get that. They've obviously started early. They stripped their bed early. Unless that's the spare duvet. Could be. Bit warm, maybe it's the winter duvet. It's warm, probably have a summer duvet on at the moment. There we go. Well done, well done, that couple. If they ever watch the Friday Reads, hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm that strange woman in the window. Hi. Very nice. There we go, there we go. Oh, I was able to bring you live laundry action. If that isn't a treat for you, I don't know what is. I don't think we can top that. We're going to have to leave it here. This has been lovely, Booktube, and I look forward to seeing, seeing you next week. Let's do this again.